In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, as we gather together here at Our Lady of Las Vegas Church on this 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time in the Church's liturgical year. We come together as a people of God. All of us are parishioners, all of you who are watching on your various devices in the various places that you are watching us. We're very happy that you have found us and with us and that you are celebrating this liturgy with us today. We invite you to prayer as we now begin to celebrate our faith in this Eucharist and prepare to unite with Christ. Let us acknowledge our sins now, asking God to grant us mercy and forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak his name no more. But when it becomes like fire burning in my heart, 
imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, hold, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. 
Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, last Sunday, St. Peter was front and center when Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people say that I am? And after saying, well, one of the prophets, Elijah, Jeremiah, Jesus says, well, who do you say that I am? And it was Simon who said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said that it was his father that revealed that truth to him and he made, gave Simon the keys to the kingdom and he changed his name to Peter which is in the old language the rock and upon that rock he Jesus would build his church and it's Peter now who whom Jesus gave this authority to that is speaking to him when Jesus says to his disciples that it's time for him to go up to Jerusalem and that he's going to suffer there and that he's going to die. Well, of course, that doesn't sit well with the apostles and Jesus, as this newly appointed leader of the church, is come and comes to Jesus and says, well, Lord, God forbid that this should happen to you. We're going to have to stop this from happening. And Jesus says, well, get ye behind me, Satan. You're trying to trip me up. And you're thinking as man thinks, not as God thinks. And I'm sure Peter was kind of taken aback by what Jesus said to him. But nonetheless, what Jesus said was true. That we think as people think and not as God thinks. And that's why we have so much trouble in our faith life. Because we can't put our trust in God. And we find it difficult to understand God's ways because God's ways are not our ways. But we know that God's ways are always perfect and they're always good, but we just have trouble accepting it. Jesus says to us, he says to us also that if you want to be my disciple, that you have to follow after me. You have to pick up your cross each and every day and follow in my footsteps. Carrying a cross is not an easy thing. Just ask Jesus, he'll tell you, because he had an experience of carrying that cross and dying on that cross. It wasn't an easy thing for him to do, but yet it was something that was absolutely necessary to have happen. We might not understand it, and maybe to our dying day in this world, we will never understand why that was so important. But it was necessary for our salvation, for our good, and it is only through the cross that we find our way to the glory of the resurrection of Jesus. There's no other way around it. We, like to, we always want to have the blessings, but we don't want to have the work behind it. We want to have the glory, but we don't, have to, we don't, want, to, we don't want to have to, that struggle that leads to it. Jesus came into this world to serve not to be served, not to be served. And he wants us to follow in that example. And he challenges us because we want that instant glory, but there is no such thing as instant glory. Everything that, that we come to is something that we have to, we're challenged to work for, we're challenged to, to follow after Christ who didn't get everything handed to him on a silver platter. Jesus, who was the Son of God, came into this world. And you would think everything would have been great. You look at his life, and you see that he had a lot of challenges. He had a lot of things that he had to overcome, but he did it. 
The Blessed Mother, we look at Mary, who was chosen by God to be the one to bring the Savior into the world. And you would think, well, she should live on easy street. Everything should come easy for her. But it didn't. How much Mary had to suffer? How much did she have to, how many challenges did she have to overcome? Even though she was close to God, that didn't spare her from the, from the sufferings, from the challenges that she had to bear in life. And we, if we are to follow Christ, we have to, we have to bear those burdens as well. We have to carry our, our crosses as well as Jesus asks us to do. So if we want to be followers of Christ, we have to think as God thinks, not as man thinks, to lift up our, our thought process to his and allow his light, his inspiration, his spirit to penetrate our heart, our soul, our very being, and to walk with Jesus. And if that means that we have to carry our crosses, then so be it. But we always know that it is the cross that leads to the glory of the resurrection. That is Jesus' victory, and it is ours as well. Please rise, everyone, and join with me as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I can confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To be faithful disciples, we must take up the cross and follow after Jesus wherever he might lead us, willing to forfeit our life for the good of God's kingdom. Let us now pray to the Lord for church leaders, that their words and actions may inspire each of us to take up our cross and follow Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who make the laws we live by, that they may listen to all who cry out for justice, kindness, and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may value all of God's creation and resolve to care for it and sustain it for future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick, may they manifest and maintain the power of hope in the midst of anguish and pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those affected by the devastation of fires and storms throughout our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the names and intentions listed in our parish community book of prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may come into God's kingdom of light, love, and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the repose of the soul of William Mitchell, for whom this Mass is offered and for our own private intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us also pray for all teachers and staff, students, administrators, at the beginning of this new school year, that despite the challenges of the COVID virus, that it may be a successful year, that our students may grow in understanding and wisdom and love and faith in God. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. O Heavenly Father, we call on you for help as we shoulder the crosses that we must carry. Show us your kindness and mercy as we offer these prayers for all who are carrying their crosses. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you, Father, we live, we move, and we have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in his paschal mystery. And so, Father, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration we now acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willing into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember William and all who have died in your mercy. Father, welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Peter, and with all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, 
that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for being here today and celebrating this Mass with us. In whatever way, however you reached us, whatever device you're on, wherever part of the country you're in, thank you for, for being with us. And we hope that all is well with you and you are continuing to be strong in the face of this COVID virus that we're facing. We're still here, um, even those many months that, that this has been, been going on, who believe that this already, the 30th of August, we'd still be uh, doing this in the midst of this pandemic, but here we are. And we'll continue to be here every Sunday as long as it's necessary. So thank you. And thank you for your support for us here at our parish of Our Lady of Las Vegas, for your donations. You keep our ministry going, and we're so very thankful for that because without you we couldn't be doing what we're doing we've been doing our first communions we've been we're going to be doing our confirmations in september and and continuing in, in the various ministries that we we do and it's all thanks to you and your support for us and so from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for your donations however you get them to us whether it's through online giving or you mail in or you call the office or however it is thank you so much also thank our, our ministers who are here to uh, celebrate this myth. There's only, there's only one, two, three, four, five of us together. So Bernie, thank you so much for being our lector today, representing the Knights of Columbus, which is a very active group here in our parish. We thank you for all that you do. They do so much for our parish, so thank you so much. To Mikhail, who is operating the cameras as he always does, smiling, you can't see him, but he's smiling. And to, to Dave and Eva, who are just wonderful musicians, the best that there is. And you know that because you, you listen to them and they're just fantastic. So thank you so much for, for that. And so um, if anyone is, is celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something special going on in your life this week, great. We're very thankful that there are things to celebrate even in the midst of all this, this weirdness that's going on. Celebrate with joy. Let the peace of God be in your heart. And if you are experiencing some difficulties and sadness and challenges, please know that our prayers do go with you to lift you in spirit, because Jesus is always there. He's filling your heart with his grace and his blessing. And as we prepare to end this Mass now, let us do so with God's grace and blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. He is exalted, the King is exalted.